members of Sangha, uh, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Sun Il Hwang and I'm from Dongguk University, uh, Seoul, South Korea. Uh, uh, this is my uh, great honor to be able to have a, a chance to give a talk, uh, especially here in Rajgir. And I feel like I'm at the heart of Buddhism and I feel like the Buddha was actually sitting over that Saptapahana uh, cave and give a power to me to deliver the essence of Buddhism, which is Nirvana. So uh, actually, uh, the Nirvana is one of the subjects when I was study when I was at Oxford University. And then my book about the metaphor and literalism in Buddhism uh, was published in Rotrich uh, Publisher, year 2006. And the main uh, subject is Nirvana. So I, uh, today, I try very quick uh, to talk about unique uh, feature of Buddhist Nirvana, which consists of two steps. Uh, you know, Buddhist Nirvana consists of Sa Upadisesa Nirvana and An Upadisesa Nirvana, which means Nirvana during life and Nirvana at death. Why uh, that kind of thing happening? And what could be its uh, uh, meaning, uh, especially in the contemporary society? I try to deliver uh, this very short talk. Uh, in Sutta Nipata, when you are uh, looking at very carefully, uh, there was a dialogue between uh, Mara and the Buddha. Uh, they usually talk each other, very uh, interesting talk. And one of the talk, uh, Mara uh, said to the Buddha, uh, cow owner become happy because of the cow. Uh, uh, a man with the son become happy because of the son. Possession is a source of happiness. Anyone who hasn't got any possession, uh, their life will be made miserable. Uh, this is a kind of attack toward the Buddhist the monks who cannot have anything you know, uh, in their position. Uh, in that uh, uh, verse, the Buddha answered back, uh, cow owner becomes sad because of a cow. Uh, a man with a son becomes sad because of the son. Uh, possession is a source of your uh, suffering. Uh, anyone who hasn't got any possession, uh, there is no need to become suffer. So this is a very nice uh, uh, talk. But uh, we usually say in this talk, uh, the Buddha uh, actually used uh, the meaning, two different meaning of the word, and answer back. Uh, what I mean is that we become happy because of the outside object. A man uh, watching very beautiful woman become very happy. Man watching Mercedes Benz, uh, we become very happy. But we become suffer not because of the out outside object, but because of our internal attachment toward uh, that sort of thing. Uh, for example, uh, when I was third year uh, university uh, undergraduate student, I have a girlfriend, uh, but we fight each other after three months. And then uh, I feel like I can't uh, endure anymore. So whenever I go to the university, she was there. So I thought, she is the source of my suffering. So I'm, I'm, I, if I'm not, if I no longer saw her, I will not suffer. You know? So I decided to have a two-year uh, compulsory military service in South Korea. <laughs> so after two years, I coming back to the university, and she's just still there uh, as a, a graduate, graduate student in the history department. But miraculously, there is no more pain in me. Because in ordinary life, we all thought source of our misery is outside. We all uh, try not to be uh, with them and not to not try to have some distance uh, from there. But actually, the source of our suffering is not outside there. Inside there, our attachment toward outside the object, we can't achieve it, we become suffer. So Buddhism, uh, one of the key features about Buddhism is that uh, Buddhist practice not aiming at our action or our, uh, you know, uh, object we desire outside. We try to control inside of our mind. Uh, in, even though we are surrounded by lots and lots of things, we become, uh, you know, engaged in having some kind of a passion or hatred, we become uh, indifferent. So the mind we are aiming at achieving is the lake where there is no more way through which we can see things outside as it is very clearly. So that is one of the features. So Buddhism is uh, trying to have remove or destroy all our internal attachment. So anyone who completely destroy 
all of our attachment inside. This is Nirvana uh, during life. And the, that man, when he passed away, he finally achieved Nirvana at death. So Sa Upadi says uh, Nirvana, Nirvana be the a remainder of a clinging uh, from the Theravada interpretation. Uh, Gilesha Nirodha, which means uh, destruction of our uh, defilement, the destruction of our attachment inside. And An Upadesa Nirvana, uh, Nirvana without remainder of cleaning, means uh, Kanda Nirvana or Skanda Nirvana or destruction of our uh, birth body or destruction of the thing we got when we were birthed. Uh, consists of uh, five aggregates. So uh, this is a kind of a Buddhist thing to do. So when we uh, think about the situation uh, during the time of the Buddha, uh, Buddhism uh, was, was a new religion surrounded by six different uh, you know, uh, new religions, uh, starting with the Jainism or Ajivikas or Sanjayas and so on. Uh, especially when we think about Jainism, uh, you know, it's one of the most uh, leading uh, ascetic tradition in India, and still uh, Jainism is leading this area. But uh, in order to achieve Nirvana uh, in Jainism, in order to become the winner uh, against the all odds, uh, you should be die. You know, uh, voluntary starvation to death is still said to be the best way to become jina or to achieve nirvana there. So uh, India, uh, this is what I like India. Indian people, you know, from the life and death, they have no fear. <laughs> no, death is no problem. If I'm, I'm aim aiming at achieving something, no problem, I can do it. So this is the one thing I like, Indian tradition and Indian philosophy and Indian practice. But in order to achieve uh, liberation in order to become a uh, saint uh, only when you were dying uh, it's uh, a bit a bit too far especially in this kind of a contemporary world so when we think about the buddha when could be the time buddha think about this kind of a two step nirvana uh, i can say uh, before the Buddha become enlightened, a bit, uh, around six years, he did uh, a hush, hush asceticism in the mountain. And he just ate just one grain a day, and he was almost dying. And, and then that moment, a uh, very nice Indian lady, Sujata, appeared in front of the uh, Buddha and offered the food. So the Buddha thought, life is already uh, miserable, and I'm almost dying. But if I'm dying, uh, Without achieving any knowledge, without achieving any truth, uh, my life will be useless. So that actually makes the Buddha accepting the food. So I usually say to my students that that decision uh, is the choosing of the life. The life is more important than death. We are living here, so living in this life, in living here in this world is more important to the death. So the Buddha chose the life, and then. He uh, changed the meaning of nirvana during that time. It can only be achieved at the time of the death. He actually changed it. One step, first step, we can achieve it while <clears throat> we are alive. And second one, we finally liberate it at, at the time of the death. So uh, in this first step, this is a total confirmation uh, that uh, there is no more rebirth in my, in my life. So that total, uh, total confirmation, we usually call it Samma Sambodhi, Samma Sambodhi. It's a perfect uh, awakening uh, of the knowledge that there is no more rebirth in me, so that I will not suffer anymore. So this is ideal of a Buddhist Nirvana. So when we think about this point in this contemporary world, uh, I have to say Buddhism nowadays is a self-developing. So at the time of the Buddha, Buddhism is uh, among the most uh, effective way to have their society behind, to become a monk or wandering ascetics and uh, leaving their society uh, completely. But nowadays, Buddhism uh, developing, uh, it is kind of self-developing into the world. And the Buddhism in Korea, uh, in, in many Asian country, countries, starting to be used as a means uh, to have a kind of a treatment, to give a kind of a new method to deal with the, the stress, 
to deal with uh, the problem we are facing in this uh, contemporary past changing life. So the meaning of uh, Nirvana within the Buddhism actually show while we are very busy, uh, even though uh, we are not dying, we can do something while we are alive. So uh, that's the one of the key feature of the Nirvana. So uh, the Buddha first talked about this Sa uh, Upadisesa Nirvana almost 2,500 years ago, but still uh, in this contemporary moment, his uh, message is just still, uh, for me, very powerful and a very correct means to deal with our contemporary problem in this uh, world and in, in this society. Thank you very much.